<clears throat> What's up? Go ahead. All right. Um, like me. Hard on me. For these last three weeks. A lot of dramatic changes that have happened. I lost two apartments within a two month span. I lost a vehicle. And you know, I was just going through it earlier, just recently, just a couple hours ago. Just going through it like, man, bye. I can't take it. I get right here by one more. Like, what's that sound? I hear y'all talking about it. That sound like the word. I'm walking this way. Uh, look what y'all talking about. The exact same. Y'all talking about the exact same thing. I was just right there sitting right there. What the hell is it? They talk about what I'm doing. Remember, no buying and selling on the Sabbath day. What's your reason? My name is Kervitz. Kervitz. Yeah. Okay, so what's your nationality right here? I'm Haitian. Haitian, all right. So what does that mean? That means you are from the tribe of Levi, That's right? right. right? Yeah. Because Haitian is not in the Bible. Our history is written in the Holy Bible. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So it says all the curses will come upon the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and pursue them and destroy them. Why is that? Read on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, because we reject the Bible, what God tell us to do, to keep his commandments, and we reject his commandments, and his statutes, which he commanded thee. So because we reject his commandments, reject the Holy Bible, God rejected us and put us in the ghettos, put us in the hood, uh, uh, put us in the projects. He brought us low because we broke his commandments. Read on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So who was the ones uh, put in the ghettos? Who was the ones put in the prison houses? Who was the one that have poor education? That have police chasing them and shooting them down unjustly in their neighborhoods. That's us. Right. right. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Why? Because we the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. God said again, if we break his commandments, he would do it to us. You know. And they shall be upon thee for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder right. and upon thy seed forever. Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city uh -huh. and cursed Shall thou be in the field? So us living in the ghetto is cursed in the city. Right. Us uh, living in the projects means we're cursed in the city. The fact we had to uh, work as slaves in the field, pick cotton, that means we were cursed in the field. Right. So the Bible is prophesying about you and our history. Right. What, what, what does that make us? Israelites according to the Bible. That's, That's right. God is talking to. Give me that in Deuteronomy 29 and 1 real quick. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So he's talking to the children of Israel. Right. The same people you read about, King David, King Solomon, Jesus Christ, Nehemiah, those are our forefathers. Right. Our history is written in the Bible. <laughs> those words, chapter verse 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Bring it up. And thou shall become an astonishment. It says, thou shalt become 
and astonishment. The nations know that we are the Israelites according to the Bible, but we don't know that. We think we niggas. We think we uh, Haitians. We think we Zoe. We think we Jamaicans. God said we'll be an astonishment to all the other nations. Read. A proverb. A proverb means a wise saying. So let me ask you, uh, what was your name again? Kervitz. Okay, I'm going to realize. So it says that we become a proverb. A proverb means if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in the book. Right. Because they don't read. Right. They don't want. They don't care about reading. They don't know what Give them some rap music. And right. Some fried chicken and a, and a grill so they can do a cookout. That's a proverb. Give them some weed so they can smoke and right. get high and sex their women and let them sag their pants. Those are proverbs that's used against us. Again, God says that will happen to us because we broke his commandments. Right. Read. And a byword. And a byword, meaning you're being called outside of the name of Israel. So now they call us Haitian, Jamaican, uh, Bahamian, West Indian, Black, uh, Puerto Rican, El Salvadorian, Honduran. Those are bywords that's not uh, written in the Bible. Right. God said we are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Read. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. And no matter where you go, all nations will call you nigger, will call you a uh, spick, will call you a wetback, will uh, call you a, uh, 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 give me some words, Haitian Chico, right? Uh, so, they, Trump said that we, uh, the so-called Haitians, live in this shit, the whole country. So what, who's, who's the power that's being used against? Us. Right. We the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Jump to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. It says, therefore shall we serve our enemies, which the Lord shall send against us. Let me ask you real quick. Who are our enemies that we're serving right now? Give me verse 43. Right. Okay, what people are? Right, who owns the money? Who owns the government? What nation? The, the race. The race of the race of people that pay you to go to work. The race of people that give you uh, uh, ID cards, education. The Caucasian people. Who owns the food we go, uh, uh, get our food from? The Chinese people. The gas we get our gas from. The Arabs. God says these people are your enemies. Right. Uh, give me verse 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee, that is within thee, shall get above thee very high, uh -huh. and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger are the heathens you see around. Again, the Arabs, the white man, the Chinese man. If you look around our neighborhoods, they own everything in our neighborhood. The gas you get, uh, the food you get, the, the grocery you get, the jobs you work. It says the stranger, the place you live, the stranger shall get above you very high, and we shall be very low. Right. And we're going to them for everything. Read. Right. He shall lend to thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall lend to thee, and you won't be able to lend to him. If you if you want a bank loan, you're getting it from the white man. If you want credit, you're getting it from the so-called white man. Read. He shall be the head, uh -huh. and thou shalt be the tail. And they're the ones owning everything in our neighborhoods, and we're the ones following right after them. Right. So go to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee Read. in hunger uh -huh. and in thirst Read. and in nakedness and in want of all things. So if you're hungry, uh, if you're thirsty, and if, if you want anything, you have to go to the other nations for it. The clothes that's on our back right now, we don't make that. Right. To, su to sustain our whole nation of people, we don't make that. The schools that's being built up right now that our kids go to, we don't own that. We go to their schools and get education from them. Right. The, the places we live, they provide us with that. Section 8, food stamps, right. they provide us with that. That's the, we the crumbs, we get the crumbs of society. Right. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And this the clue, it says he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Look at this sign right here. When was the yoke of iron put upon our necks? Right, and slavery. These illustrations, these drawings, we got this right here because we know our people are visual people. And we're showing the scriptures right here, letting them know that our history is in the Bible. Right. That's right. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And now we are destroyed because now we call ourselves nigger, negro, crip, Haitian, so blood, paru, 
We call ourselves everything under the sun, but Israelites. We doing everything under the sun except keeping God's commandments. Right. Now we sexing our women, sagging our pants. Don't care what we doing in life or where we going in life. We don't care. We just turning up for the moment. We are destroyed as a nation of people. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying. It says the Lord will bring a nation, a group of people against us as swift as the eagle fire. What nation represent themselves as the eagle? United States of America. And what race of people run this United States of America? The so-called white man. Right. So the Bible is prophesied about them conquering us. Right. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Who taught the Haitians French? The so-called white man. Read. A nation of fierce countenance. Right. Which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And no matter how old you is, nor how young you is. In their eyes, we still niggas. Right. In their eyes, we still three-fifths of a man. Right. In right. their eyes, they can shoot. They can have more remorse over killing a dog than killing a young black man. Right. Or a Hispanic. They have more remorse uh, if you kill a pet over us. Because they consider us that we're three-fifths of a man. Right. Right. So give me uh, Deuteronomy uh, 10 and 12 real quick. So again, now, with all this information, with all this knowledge, knowing that we was put into slavery because of breaking God's commandments, what do you think would get us out of slavery? Unity. Unity? What else? If breaking God's commandments put us in slavery, how do we get out of slavery? Repent. Repent and keep God's commandments. Right. Right. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Bring it up. And now Israel... What does the Lord thy God require of thee? So what does God require of you? Because you're an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. He wants you to fear him. Read. To walk in all his ways. Uh -huh. And to love him. Uh -huh. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now, how, you, how do you love God? How do you walk after God? How do you fear God? It's going to tell you in the next verse. To keep the commandments of to the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep his commandments is how you fear him, love him, and walk after him. That's how you serve God. Right. Keeping his commandments. Following what the Bible tells us to do. Right. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Uh-huh. That's it on that? So it says, keep God's commandments for your good. I'm going to ask you a question real quick. You do any uh, smoking, anything like that? Okay, give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Bring it out. So one of the commandments of God, for our men to be sober, not right. to smoke anything. Right. And if you're drinking, not to get drunk. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Bring it know up. ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So God says your body is a temple, and His Holy Spirit is in you. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So what do you think defiles your temple? Smoking defiles your temple. Popping pills defiles your temple. Uh, getting drunk defiles your temple. So it says, if any man defiles the temple of God, if any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God will bring judgment upon you and destroy you. Right. That's why you see predominantly the statistics is high in our community. We see a lot of our people with cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer, heart disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, whatever you name it. Right. That's because God is destroying us for abusing our bodies. Right. With drugs, with pills, uh, with, with uh, abusing ourselves with alcohol. He's destroying us for that, right? With right. toxins. Read on. That's it on that. For the temple of God is holy, uh -huh. which temple ye are. And God says, you are holy, and you are a temple unto him. So what does that mean? Throw away the drugs. Right. Right? Change who you are. Give me Acts 319. And how do you change? Because it's not going to be easy. Don't think you can do it alone. Because you said you got to have unity, right? That's what the Bible is about. You unifying and repenting and keeping God's commandments? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, was it three and nine or four and nine? Right. Three. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. Bring it out. Two are better than one. So two are better than one. Read. Because 
they have a good reward for their labor. Agreed. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Uh -huh. But So what does that mean? It says if one fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So when you get on hard times, you're battling temptation, or you're battling the drugs, you're going to have a brother beside you that say, look, bro, don't go down that road because it's going to lead you to death. The right. kingdom is coming. Right. Keep on keeping God's commandments. You're going to get eternal life. Read. For if, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone uh -huh. when he falleth. Read. For he has not another to help him up. Give me that in 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, woe to him that is alone. If you are alone or walking about trying to fight temptation, you're going to fall every single time. That's why you need unity. That's why God says, gather together, O nation, not desire. Right. So let's read 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Read. Be sober. Be sober. Read. Be vigilant. Read. Because your adversary, the devil, yep. as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So the Satan, the devil, he's walking about as a roaring lion. He's seeking whom he may devour. When you got a pack of sheep, right, and that one sheep go astray, and you got a lion out there, and he's hungry, who do you think he's going to get? He's going to get that one sheep that went astray from the rest of the pack. Bring it up. And that's what Satan do every single time. So give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. So if we don't gather together, Satan is going to destroy us. That's why Christ had 12 men walking beside him. Because he, again, he understood that unity was the key, was power. Right. Read what you got. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Bring it up. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desire. God says we are a nation that's not desire. Every other nation on this earth don't like us. So what else we got to do? What's best to do? We got to gather together. Right. Amongst ourselves. Right. Give me first uh, Thessalonians 1 and 7. We got to gather together and come amongst ourselves. And that's how we be at peace. Keeping God's commandments. Real quick. Real quick. Before you get that. How you doing, brother? Uh, Kervitz? Kervitz. Good to meet you. I'm Severus. Real quick. Just like the officer was bringing out, you have to make sure you, you find out what type of brothers is around you. Because a lot, a lot of times what we do, we make the mistake. We, we pick our friends and sometimes they're not the right choices. Uh, Sirach 37 and 12. You know what I want? So the Bible shows you from beginning to end how to walk uprightly, what to choose. To, which it basically gives you wisdom. You understand? That's most of the things we lack here. We lack wisdom. The black man, Hispanic man, they lack wisdom. That's why they go to prison, go to the houses. They in the crack houses. They walking up and down the streets, lost. You understand what I'm saying, Curtis? They lost. But guess what? The Bible already shows you the light. It is the light. Watch this. Read. Sirach, chapter 37, verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. So did it say be continually with a, a person who likes to fight? Did it say be continually with someone who, who won't keep you sober? It, it's talking to the person. It says be continually with godly men. Because what a godly man going to do? What well, he's going to make sure you do? He's going to make sure you remain godly. That's right. Someone who's, who's no. walking around with hate or not sober, right. what you, where do you think he's going to lead you? Exactly. So likewise, let's read that. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. You hear that? To keep the commandments of the Lord or laws of God. Give me uh, uh, Proverbs 6 and 23. Because you got to understand. That's what we do. We, we grow up, we constantly seeking that brotherhood, we constantly seeking to be together, but we don't know the right way. Right. We haven't been taught the right way. That's why most young men, they go to gangs, all right? They flock to gangs. They go they go to these clubs seeking for, for, for the wrong attention. But God said continually. That means you kind of make it your business to be around godly men. Don't right. you go make sure. Hey, Curtis, no, 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 you're walking the wrong way, brother. God don't like that. Come on, come on, let's go. Right. Be with us. I'm going to show you how to do it with the scriptures. Come on. Proverbs up. chapter 6, verse 23. Bring For the up. commandment is a lamp. The Bible says the commandment. God said his commandment is a lamp. What does a lamp do? It right, it illuminates in a dark place. Is this not a dark place? Ain't this world a dark place? All right, read. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. You see that? God's laws is a light. So when you find yourself in that dark place, all right, it says rely on the commandments. 
You're lying in the commandments. You won't fail. And guess what? You're around brothers who's always about God's commandments. Right. right. Read. Bring it up. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You see that? Reproof. Reproof means to, to correct. So certain ways we, we were taught wrong. So the Bible says his laws is going to correct us. It's going to reprove us. Read. Right. And what else? That last part again? And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. It says instruction is the way of life. Now, you've been given all of, most of the things that, that, that pertains to your salvation. You know you're an Israelite now. You know now your heritage relies in this book. All right? So the next steps you should be out of fly on you, right? So the next step should be next step should be what? We should hear from you. If you really de desire that brotherhood, that unity, then we should hear from you. If you desire to please God, do you desire to please God? Bring it out. That's right. Bring it out. All right, then, so we should hear from you. Right. All right, you don't let the day go by without us hearing from you. What's up? Go ahead. All right. Um, life being hard on me for these last few weeks. A lot of genetic changes that have happened. I lost two apartments within a two month span. I lost a vehicle. Um, and you know, I was just going through it earlier, just recently, just a couple of hours ago. Just going through it like, man, bye. I can't take it anymore. Get home. And I just got back to where I sleep at. And I just, there was too much going on in my mind. I just can't sit still. And I said, let me take a walk and just talk to God. I'm talking. I'm, I get right here by Walmart. I'm like, what's that sound? I hear y'all talking. I'm like, that sound like the word. I'm walking this way. Uh, look what y'all talking about, the exact same thing. <laughs> Losing hope, or giving up, how to say, you know what? It is what it is, like, like y'all talking about the exact same thing. Like, I was just right there, sitting right there, crying, and just, like, what the hell? Just, they talking about what I'm going through. And honestly, I feel better. So guess what? But guess what? Kermit, you also are, were created to be his vessel as well. That's right. You understand? That's right. Now watch, watch this. It's a reason why you go through what you're going through. It's a reason why you just came. It's not by uh, accident. It was, it was God's plan. You understand? He doesn't do anything by accident. Watch this. Give me a uh, first Samuel. This is the reason why we experience those uh, low points in our lives and the high points of our lives. Read. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 7 The up. Lord maketh poor You hear that? He said the Lord make us poor Come on And maketh rich And do what? And maketh rich So it's the Lord who's able to do all those things Read. Right. He bringeth low and lifteth up Right now you low It says the, the other part says he bringeth up So now you gotta But in order to see that part right there You have to endure you have to endure. Right. You understand what I'm saying, Kermis? Come on. Is that it on that? Now give me uh second uh Ezra 14. You know Bring what I'm talking out. about? Bring it out. There we go. Second Ezra. So you gotta understand, Kermis. It's it's not it's not by coincidence. The most high instructed it. He said, Kermis, you know what? I'm gonna jack you up. Alright? Because you've been walking blind all this time in darkness. Now it's time for you to hear the light. Right. right. Now it's time for you to wake up and let's see what you're gonna do with that light, Kermis. Come on. Second Esther chapter 14, verse 14. Bring it Let up. go from thee, mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. You see that? Cast away the burdens of man. One of the burdens of man is you losing all, all what you just had. It's the most high he does that. Before you, he takes you in. He strips us from everything. All the things that you once used to have, he takes you down to the bare minimum. Oh, you got brothers who could testify to that. All right. All right. They can tell you, hey, listen, we, we have brothers who used to live the fancy life, dress real good, push real nice. Right. But once they heard the word of God, the mo they had to prepare themselves because they knew what was going to come next. Read. Put off now the weak nature. You see what God calls that? Right. He says that's the weak nature. Right. He, that's weak to him because once you begin to apply his commandments, Maybe you begin to get built up. It's just like working out in the gym. All right? You work out, you're working out in the gym. 
you, you're not gonna get strong overnight, right? No, it takes time. Likewise, you wanna get built up, you gotta let go of the mortal thoughts. Read. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. It's time for you to set it aside now. That's a commandment. Set it aside. What's the next step now? You understand? Are you gonna sit back and wallow? Are you gonna grab onto these substances on these streets? Because believe it or not, Satan, just like when he said, Satan is waiting for you to get so depressed, get down, and he's waiting for you to slip up. Here, here goes the drugs. Here comes some violence. Mix all that up. Next thing you know, you either in the morgue or in jail. So it says to let go. Now it's time to move forward. Read. And hasty to flee from these times. You see that? Make haste for, to flee from these times. You know what I want? Uh, Second Corinthians. I mean, excuse me. Uh, uh, Sarat. Sarat 2 and 1. All right, Sarat 2 and 1. Because, Kermits, again, brother, the officer brought out who you are according to the Bible. You're not just an ordinary Joe. You're not just the ordinary Joe. You, you was meant and created for greatness. You was meant to go out, learn this book, and then afterwards teach your people. That's right. That's why he's doing what he's doing. Because what you're going through, a lot of brothers went through it already, like I mentioned. Right. It's not by accident. I'm going to prove it to you out of the Bible. Read. Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on, My son. son. If thou come to serve the Lord. My son, Curvance, if you decide to serve the Lord, read. Prepare thy soul for temptation. You see what the Bible said? Prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. And when you read the scriptures, many of the prophets, they suffered temptation. You got the prophet Job. His kids were taken. All his kids destroyed. He had wealth taken. Health Bring it taken. Out. Bring it out. You understand? He was brought low. Right. Read. Set thy heart aright. That means get your mind right. The thing that's going to get a, our mind right, Curtis, is this Bible. Right. The light of God, his commandments, that's the only way a man can walk upright. Because in this book, it shows you how to deal properly with your money, how to walk upright, meaning being sober-minded, meaning working with your hands, not depending on gang violence, drugs, substance, hustling. No, it says a man, if a man's going to eat, he must work. That's, that's in his book. How to treat your brother. All that information is in here. Read. And constantly endure. You hear what it said? It said constantly. Not just one day. It said constantly. This is an ongoing day, an ongoing job. From sun up to sundown. You gotta constantly endure. Read. And make not haste. That means don't give up. Because a lot of our brothers, that's what they do. Sisters, that's what they do. They run. They give up. You hear that, Curtis? Read. And make not haste in the time of trouble. Don't make haste. That means you got to stand firm, Kervins. You got to stand firm. You're going to make it through. You got to put that in your mind. Read. Cleave unto him. It said cleave unto him. The him here is the, uh, the word of God. All right? The word of God. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto the most high God. How do we cleave unto him? Uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. This is how we cleave unto him. Bring it out. I want you to make sure you take notations. Well, this is what you need to be repeating day and night, meditating on God's word. You got a Bible? You got to get one. Make it your business to get one. That's All right, they got them at Goodwill. You make sure you get one, cause this is your this is your uh, heritage right here. Right. All right. Read. Proverbs chapter three verse five. Trust in the Lord. You see, this is how we cleave onto Him. Trust in the Lord with wow. all thine heart Come on. and lean not unto thine own understanding. So what you think might be right, all right, thinking getting high or doing it, uh, uh, selling drugs, whatever the case may be. It says you rely on the Lord, trust in him. Right. Read. In all thy ways. In everything you do, trust in his ways. Come on. Acknowledge him. It says acknowledge him. He shall direct that path. Exactly. Give me Proverbs of, of 12 and 14. Real quick, because you got to be mindful, because we'll, we'll stop. We'll do good for a couple of days. I'm telling you, we'll, we'll get right out, like, juiced up, ready to go. But next thing you know, something that happened, and it derails you. Right. Your own thoughts will begin to creep in. Damn, I used to do this back then. It used to get me money. Or I used to, no, hold up. Let me call so-and-so. Knowing so-and-so is not going to lead you back to the word of God. Read. No, give me 14 and 12. I'm sorry. 14 and 12. Proverbs 14 and 12. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. See, there's a way that seems right to you, meaning you rely on your own self. 
Read. But the end thereof. But at the end, come on. Are the ways of death. You're not going to prosper. You're going you're gonna to fall right back to square one. You understand? You're going to fall right back to square one. So again, wisdom is crying out to you, Curtis. Wisdom is crying out to you, Curtis. Time to repent. Now, what's reserved for sinners? Come on. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. Uh -huh. Evil pursueth sinners. That means you can't get right. For some reason, every time you put your hand to do something, it's not going to work out for you. It's not going to work out for you. You're relying on your own mind. It's not going to work out for you. Because it says evil pursueth sinners. Evil. Come on. But to the righteous, good shall be repaid. You see that? To the righteous, those who decide to keep God's commandments, it says good shall be repaid. Everything's going to go right. Uh, go up for you now. Give me uh, Isaiah 26 and 3. Let's get to Come on. Isaiah 26. Because it says evil pursues sinners. How about those who rely on God? What do you think is going to happen to them? The opposite. Watch. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. You hear that? The Most High said... He will keep you in perfect peace. Come on. Whose mind Who's is what? Whose mind Who's what? Whose mind is stayed on thee. You see that? Let go of the mortal thoughts. Replace it with the commandments of God. Kerbis, the ball is in your hand now. Right. Officer, come back up. All praise. Alright, so give me uh, uh second Thessalonians one and seven. Last few scriptures, I'm gonna wrap it up. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse seven. Bring it up. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Because living on the street is nowhere to be. So you're in trouble right now, right? Come rest with us. Rest with your brothers. Ready? When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So Christ is coming back. He's returning to save the Israelites who are keeping God's commandments. So give me Acts uh, chapter 3 verse 19. So like the officer said, the ball's in your court now. So it's on you what to do. You're going to keep God's commandments or not. Read. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted Read. that your sins may be blotted out when the time of your oppression shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now give me Psalm 19 and 7. It says repent so, that, so uh, that you may be converted so that your sins may be blotted out. What do you think converts you? What would convert a drug dealer into a non-drug dealer? The word, the Bible would do it. Read. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Bring it up. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So the laws of God converts your soul. So we'll go back to Acts uh, chapter 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So the way you repent is keeping God's commandments. Everything you used to do, leave it in the past. Now you have to keep God's commandments in order for you to get help, in order for you to get the kingdom up that's coming. You understand? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org